Hello my fellow gamers and welcome once again to Parafilosophs Videos of Banished. Today it's not a let's play, it's just an overview of what I have learned so far and what I am going to do in my let's plays in the future. So first up, what have I learned in Paraland, the let's play you have had the chance to watch on my channel. Well, let's take a look at Paraland. I envisioned Paraland as a fishing village, but I have discovered that the lakes are not very good for fishing. You cannot sometimes even pass a thousand in these fisheries when you are on a lake. This is because most of this area is covered by land and only maybe 40 to 50% is water. So much better is if you can get a position on a river like this, where a bigger portion of this area is covered with water. Or even a better spot is if you can have a lake and a river connected at the same spot and get far more water in the area of effect of fishery. Next up, I have figured out that these nodes, as we have started calling them as banished players, are particularly good if you have the following combination. You need a forester to make a forest that is going to stay young forever and have old grown trees that you can cut down and you can pretty much increase the log limit as much as you like with even two or three or exceedingly number of four foresters and you do not have to worry about it ever getting actually cut down because it's constantly regrowing. You need a herbalist and the herbalist needs to be online for the villagers to get herbs. He is necessary for the herbs consumption. When it comes to the gatherer, it always has a position close to the forester to be able to collect the highest amount that is possible from this forested area. Additional thing that I have learned is that the placement of hunting cabins doesn't necessarily have to be in that forest. You can actually have a hunting cabin that's going to have a lot of civilization in its area of effect, but it's still going to collect a lot of venison. I think this is pretty much something of a bug or an uncompleted part of the game from the developer because he stated that if you have civilization it should make the deers go away and then the hunter would not be as efficient but you can see that these four hunters managed to collect 1200 venison in the previous year yet a huge chunk of its area of effect is under housing buildings production so that isn't really true so you can have hunting cabins even in heavily populated areas and they will still produce a lot of food. I have also learned that you sometimes have to kick out the old folks from these homes manually to force them to live with somebody else. For example, you can see here that a hunter lives with a child and if I kick them out they're going to go and live with another family. Same goes for old folks, If even if they are 70 or 80 they can still remarry and go to live with somebody else and not take up the valuable space by themselves in a house that could be used by a young couple to make babies. But that does require a lot of micromanagement. Another thing that I have learned is that when it comes to cemeteries you actually always want to have the entrance to a cemetery on its side. For example, you see this? This entrance here, the big one, the small ones don't count, the big entrance is here at the start of the small edge, because this is the smaller edge and the passageway has to go through the cemetery in this vertical road, it means that you lose a lot of spots for graves, but if the actual entrance was on the side here, I would lose only a few spots for graves that you can see probably on the second one I have built, yes, the one over here, you see that the entrance is here, okay well it was never finished, but you can see the entrance here half completed, you will only be taking up this much space with the path through the graveyard, while well, this area over here and here will be covered with graves, so you get more graves if your entrance, this one is square, but you can still see how much space does this pathway through the graveyard takes up and you lose a lot of potential grave sites. So is that all I have learned from Paraland? Well I have also learned that tools and education can increase the efficiency of your workers by a lot. They can be 
almost doubly effective if they have both the tool and education. Woo! Uh, now, was that all? It might not have been all, but it's all I can remember at this point. So, let's go to another village and see what I have learned there. For example, Aerodoc. This is something of a work in progress, I never finished it, but it gave me a few interesting lessons. For example, having these huge pastures isn't exactly the most beneficial thing you can do. Why? Well, you see here, I bought, I think, two ships when this started. Do you have any idea how long it takes to go from two ship to 25? And during all that time, you're not going to get any mutton. You're not going to get any food. All you're going to get is wool. So having a pasture with this huge size is going to stop you from creating food on that pasture for a very long time. It could take upwards to 10 years for there to be enough sheep here for me to be able to kill some and get some mutton. I could reduce this and kill them along the way, but that would only prolong the time that it would take them to get to full capacity. So it is always better to build smaller pastures and then be able to get food sooner especially if you are counting on that food. When it comes to the orchards, as you all know, orchards take time to grow, so they are not something you want to build if you are in a desperate need for food. There are several things that can be figured out when it comes to the size and the number of workers required to operate the orchards. It, the same goes for farms, so that is something I will be trying to figure out in my next line of Let's Plays where I will be doing a farming orchard village at a medium map size. Now, I won't go fully developed on that map because I just want to have a nice working village and have an ability to test out various forms of farming and orchards. And a medium map is going to give me enough space to be able to play around with that. In this village, I have learned that it is very important how you expand and where do you place your housing. Because, for example, over here you will notice that I have been starting to expand. Down here I have one of these nodes, up here another one, and up here a third. And I have started expanding on a fourth. But, what have I learned about expanding? And this is something I learned in Petaland as well, and it just occurred to me. The first thing you want to do when you are expanding is to place a stockpile. Once you place a stockpile, you need to choose where you want to have your buildings, your nodes for example. Then you place down at least one building of that node and the first building should be a forester's lodge because all that is going to happen inside the node depends on where the trees are going to be. So once you place the forester's lodge you're going to pause it, you're going to draw a road going back to the stockpile that is at the edge of the forester's range. Then you're going to place housing. Now why are you going to place housing? Because of this. This is a builder. Instead of a builder or a laborer living, let's say, over here and then going through the entire village to build your forester here, you're going to place a home, the builder is going to build his own home, he's going to move in and the next building he needs to build is just a stone's throw away. That way he has access to food, for example he can go to this storage barn, get some food, get back here. He can go find himself some firewood from this woodcutter for example. And he can live here, eat, get warm and go to building as soon as he is able to. Once he is finished building all these buildings that you need in a node, you just simply turn this builder into a forester, gatherer, hunter or herbalist. And he is now living right next to his job being able to go quickly to his job and also quickly go and get some more food or firewood. You will also always need a woodcutter close to all these homes so they have quick access to firewood which can of course be stored on a stockpile. The forester will create logs and you should always place a stockpile right next to the woodcutter. Why? Because the foresters are the ones that are gonna get to their cap far sooner than the woodcutters are. And if you're using firewood to trade, which you're probably using, then it is much better to have the woodcutter have his resource, his logs, right next to him and be able to constantly make more firewood 
then to have him go all the way to the forester's lodge to stockpile next to it, take a log, go back and work. It is better for the foresters to be the ones delivering the logs to him. Uh, one additional thing I forgot to say is that when you are expanding and you are adding these new buildings, for example here I would maybe put a hunter, even though I said previously you don't really need to have him in a forested area, you can even have him in the civilized area, a, a gatherer and for example a herbalist. And now that I have all these buildings placed here, I don't need to bring the resources far away to come here and build. All I have to do is place the foundations for these buildings, get a working stockpile in the area, for example here is a stockpile, and then just go and collect, for example, this much wood and all the stone in the area. That is going to be transferred to this stockpile. Once full, you can unpause the building of these buildings and the builders who are now living here and the laborers who are living right next door to the building site are going to go to this stockpile and right away bring you the resources needed for building. The builders are then having all the resources can build these buildings very quickly. Nobody has to go very far to get food or firewood. So that would be all about expanding. As I said, when it comes to farms and orchards, it is going to take a little bit more time to learn. So that is what this village has taught me. Now let's see what the last village that I have just finished last night, I think, this village has taught me. Welcome to Tereidsville, an unlucky name for a very lucky town. I don't know, maybe you have noticed this, I posted the screenshots of this village onto a few forums and Facebook groups. It is a very prosperous village where everything works properly and my villagers could not have lived in a better spot for these last 40 years. So yes, in only 40 years. I have over 500 citizens, of which 411 are adults. I have 99% clothes, 94% educated, the health is at 4.5 and happiness is at 4.5. The This average is actually at 5 and 5, but there are a few villagers that have only one star and one heart and they are kind of screwing up the average making it go 4.5. Those are the villagers that kind of get bugged from time to time because of their pathfinding, so there is nothing I can do about that. As I said, this village has been pretty blessed. There hasn't been many disasters, maybe one fire, two diseases, one chickens, pox or something like that. Chickens were affected, not the pit bull. So you can see that my population, adults, have gone with a nice rise here and then an explosion at around at around 25 years I think and you can see that it is just one constant growth and there was never any stagnation or a big drop. This is because I never took nomads. So if you want a constant nice well done expansion of your village do not take nomads because you're pretty much never going to have enough food, housing, tools, all clothes to have all of them satisfied in a very short amount of time that they give you when they move in. So just have babies, have lots of babies and to have lots of babies make lots of homes. That is how this village has managed to be so successful. Also another very important tip is to have more than one trade post. Having one trade post limits you to a very long time between two merchants. But if you have just one more trade post, this is a 100% increase and you're going to be able to trade much faster. Additional thing that I've spent a lot of time doing in this village is worker efficiency and having their homes close to their jobs, food and firewood. Now you can pretty much go around any piece of this village, click on any production building and you are going to see that the workers mostly live very close by. Now over here they don't because there are 15 of them and I have very little room here left for housing. But if you were to go to this one up here for example, you would notice that all of them live very close to this 
other quarry even though there is very again little room for housing. When it comes to for example these mines you will again notice all of them live very close by. A market even with 15 vendors all of these vendors live very close by. So the main problem with villagers usually is that the villagers who work some place have to go very far. Therefore, you lose a lot of worker efficiency. So that was my objective in this village. To try and see just how bad it is and how hard it is to get enough housing to be close to the jobs, but also have that housing always with available food, tools and clothes close by. So markets are one thing that is absolutely necessary to have a prosperous village. You absolutely need to have housing in the range of the market so that these houses can have everything they want in one place. Food, clothes, tools, even iron, coal, stone or firewood can be placed at the market and then they can find all of that at one place and they have no problem either eating, getting warmed up or building something new. Another thing that I've noticed in this village particularly, I'm not entirely sure does it count for the other villages, is that fish for some reason isn't consumed. You can see here that I have over 11,000 fish in storage, yet when you look at the other foods you're hardly going to find many foods that go even above a thousand. There's like only roots are above a thousand, everything else is below a thousand, yet I have 11,000 fish. I'm not sure is this a village particular bug, a map particular bug or anything, but it seems to be some sort of a bug. Another thing that I've learned from this village is that you can multiply your food if you sell meats. For example, chicken, beef, mutton, venison, they all trade for three at their value when they are sold. But you can buy from a food merchant food that is only worth one. So for example, if I'm selling 150 venison, then I can buy 1000 peach. 1000 apples and I can buy 225 roots. I think that was a lot to take in. So I'm going to stop with these tips here and I will be happy if you remember 50% of all that I have said. Now let's get on to the future after seeing what was in the past. My plan is to do two things. I want to make a village in a valley on medium terrain size, mild climate, disaster zone, starting condition hard that I'm going to test out a lot of theories about orchards and farms. Then there is another village that I want to make that is on terrain size large, climate is going to stay mild, I will explain why, disasters and hard are going to stay. The mild climate is going to stay because if I want a large village and I mean large as in a thousand or more villagers, if it's even manageable, then I will need farming. But if I place the climate on harsh, it is going to be like shooting myself in the foot before a marathon. You cannot have a village successful at those huge numbers without farms. You can try, but you're going to fail. So having harsh weather and trying to have farming is a very bad idea. You might actually, I'm not going to say that it is impossible to have a high population village without farms, orchards, but it is going to be very hard if you use the harsh climate. So if you want a high population, don't be afraid to give yourself a break and use the mild climate. So that would be the other village. I'm planning to make two let's plays simultaneously, so I will see about one day I'm going to have an episode on the farming village and the other day I'm going to have an episode on my large population village and then I will switch them out day by day. So that will be all what I have learned and the plans for the future. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you in my next two Let's Plays.